Welcome back to TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store TV. And today Jordan and I are heading out to the Kananaskis area again in the official TCS TV vehicle, which is the 2005 Pontiac Vibe with 230,000 kilometers on it that might break at any moment. And we're heading out here to meet Joe Desjardins, a very talented, very prolific wildlife and landscape photographer, a good friend of the store. We're gonna play all together with the Panasonic G9 because Joe is now using this small micro four thirds camera in a way that has always been DSLR country. I mean, shooting wildlife, sports, you know, all this kind of outdoor stuff, you'd always think big, heavy SLR. Now we have the opportunity to get some beautiful long lenses on very compact bodies, lighten the load. We're gonna see if these cameras can still do a good job in these conditions. Hopefully we'll see some wildlife. We're gonna have a beautiful location and a beautiful day. And luckily today we're actually hitting one of our classic Chinooks. Uh, if anybody uh, is living on the east side of the Rocky Mountains, you know, States or Canada, you're familiar with the glorious Chinook and how it can make something go from minus 10 centigrade to plus 10 centigrade in one day. Uh, otherwise, it might be very confusing. It's not global warming, but that is a thing. All right, Joe, so thanks for joining us. I appreciate you being us out here. So, uh, you know, you've been a wildlife photographer and a landscape photographer for many years now. Yeah, you bet. So just tell us a little bit about the gear that you've been using up to this point. Uh, I'm using the 1DX Mark II and the 7DX Mark II. So definitely not a lightweight camera. <laughs> no, they're beasts, absolutely. <laughs> you've had a little bit of time with the Panasonic G9 yep. now, right? So what's your impression of that? Seeing the image quality, even just from the low-res JPEGs coming out of camera, um, I was impressed, absolutely. Yeah. So. So yeah, this is uh, this is what I got in the bag today. I got the the G9 with the 200. We've got the uh, 12 to 60, which is a 24 to 120, nice walking around lens. And then we got the uh, 12 to 35, which is the 24 to 70 equivalent to uh, to what I have in my Canon gear also. So yeah, nice compact system that'll pretty much cover everything. All right, let's go shoot. I'm okay, sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Now with cameras like the G85, the GH5, the GH5S, now the G9, I know it can seem kind of confusing. We've got so many very similar looking bodies from Panasonic on the market. So where does the G9 really sit? I mean, Jordan and I love the GH5, but the G9 is really trying to make this the photographer's camera and the professional shooter's camera. This is going after the SLR market. We're talking cameras like 1DXs, Nikon D5s, and that's mostly attributed to the fact that we've got an upgraded viewfinder here, very, very fast focusing, and the capability to do silent shooting. Now, on top of that, when you consider that Panasonic has really fleshed out their long line of lenses, uh, this becomes a very feasible tool to do high-end wildlife and sports journalism photography. That stabilizer is insane. So 800 millimeter equivalent, 200 ISO, shooting about 50th of a second, and the stabilizer is just incredible. And I mean, I did find this on the GH5 and the G85. I was able to hold I would say quarter second with wider focal lengths, quite stable. Uh, this camera, I would push it another stop further, even half a second's possible. But more importantly, when you're using the long lenses, you know, with these long equivalents, the stabilizer is rock solid. So again, you know, it means you don't have to take a tripod in some situations. It also means you can keep the weight down. A very, very nice touch. Something you'll quite a bit on these lenses. Now, compared to the G85 and the GH5, we do have a different look and feel to this camera. And overall, I think they're very good improvements for somebody who is doing more photography-based stuff. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the look on the prism here. That's fine. That's just uh, the design of it. But I certainly do like the grip on this camera. It is larger, but it does balance well, especially when you are using longer focal lengths. And I never really liked the GH5's dial on the back. It's quite small, built into the body. Here, it's right out here with your thumb. Very easy to manipulate. And then the record button's been moved above that as opposed to near the viewfinder here like you'd find on the GH5S. So Panasonic is making similar cameras but changing the control structure around to suit the kind of field of work that these cameras are aimed at. Beautiful large touch LCD on the back. I like that we've got the autofocus control for our thumb. Everything laid out in a very logical way. And yes, these cameras are ruggedized and they're weather sealed. So how you doing, Joe? Oh, awesome. So, 
I haven't played with the G9 that much. And first thing I want to talk about the shutter. I mean, I like to do back button focusing traditionally, you know, uh, continuous focus, push the back. Mm -hmm. But the shutter then I'm finding is super sensitive. Hey, like yeah, very light touch and it fires. It <laughs> is, it is. The minute you start to press, it just started it's firing different. images, right? I'm like, holy crap, what's going on, right? Okay. <laughs> Maybe single shot? <laughs> Uh, that's continuous. Hang on here. When I when I used the electronic shutter, I didn't even know I was taking pictures. Yeah. All I see was my frame rate counting down. I'm going, <laughs> what's going on here? You know. So for now, until I actually get used to the um, you know the higher frame rate using the electronic shutter, uh, I had to put the mechanical on. So so again, having that high frame rate mechanical shutter is nice. But uh, this camera does also go beyond that. You can shoot 20 megapixel photos with the silent shutter, the electronic yeah. shutter. Uh, and one nice thing I do want to mention to the folks at home is now. Now the G9 does support that with full RAW, which is pretty impressive. That's but right. how important is it for your camera to be completely silent? How useful would that be if you are shooting animals? Well, you know, um, I do uh, a lot of bear photography, okay? Right. And one of the last things you want to do is surprise a bear, okay? Right. And, and, and when you're there and you're photographing, you know, you're making ambient noise, you're talking, okay? You're making the bear aware that you're there. So um, having a silent shutter in this case, not critical yeah, i mean really. uh, i'm happy to let them know i'm there and usually you know within the you know first few seconds of them knowing you're there you know they become comfortable and they start doing what they do the best eat right so i mean it, it's not a huge advantage in that case others i can maybe see it you know you're you're sitting in um i don't know a duck blind and you're shooting birds or you're you know deer elk you know walking you know stuff More like that animals yeah skittish like animals that uh, uh, absolutely absolutely gotcha. so uh for the most part uh in my experience um, a silent shutter isn't all that critical no so we uh joe has crazy eyes he's able to uh, see wildlife while you're driving down the road on a fast bend like this but we have a cow moose that's just bedded down here and She's beautiful, so we're just going to uh, keep a good distance, but get some nice photos of her while we have the opportunity. So in this case here, the mechanical shutter is actually working to our advantage. Because now she's looking and her ears are pointed towards me, okay? Right. So with most wildlife images, you know what the ears all cockeyed or leaning back, right? So when she heard the mechanical shutter, both ears perked up, perfect. You could, you could probably see the uh, snow is going 45 degrees upwards right now and uh, in my face. We're not getting, you know, a lot of sunlight. We're not getting a lot of shadows, although there is a beautiful uh, tone to the, to the light out here with this soft snow. So I figure I'm going to shoot a wide angle shot here. And I've actually brought an interesting lens out here. I've got the Sea Dreamer Laowa 7.5 millimeter F2. So it is a dead lens, so to speak, whereby there's no electrical connection with the camera, so manual focus and manual aperture. But, you know, to its credit, the G9 is going to read everything properly metering-wise. And also, with the image stabilization, I can go in and set the focal length specifically to still give me optimal stabilization for this lens. But nice and compact, and uh, yeah, beautiful tone out here. Now, of course, this has a decent tilt flip screen, touch screen, touch autofocus. And I think if you've, you know, seen any of our Panasonic videos or played with one recently, that'll become, you know, very familiar to you. But what I'm especially in love with on this camera is actually the EVF inside. Very unique, uh, over 3.6 million dots, very high resolution. And it does something very interesting with the magnification. So you actually have such a big viewfinder with high res that you can now do a, a, effectively a digital crop where you crop tighter into the monitor, but still get your 100% view frame coverage. So what this basically does is it lets you customize what kind of eye relief you get in the viewfinder. If you don't wear glasses, you can go to the sort of 0 0.82, 0 0.83, full magnification, sharp right to the corners. And if you wanna have your eye away a little bit and still see everything, you can just reduce down that eye relief. It's perfect for people wearing eyeglasses. Uh, it really makes this easy to use. Autofocus on the G9 is exceptionally good. I mean, Panasonic's really designed this camera for the kind of work it's aimed at, the sports, journalism, wildlife crowd. Now, it is very similar to the GH5, and they have the same 225-point autofocusing system. However, I would say that the G9's focusing is tuned, and they advertise a very slightly faster, uh, you know, focusing rate. But, I mean, overall, it's very effective. It's very quick. Now, it should be mentioned that it is using a contrast detect only system, not the hybrid system a lot of cameras are making very popular now. That being said, it's still insanely fast, and I would say that has to do with Panasonic tweaking this system and using their very effective DF. Auto focusing system. However, there are some things you have to keep in mind. 
First off, it's not going to give you the same autofocus result with other lenses, especially Olympus lenses. You're going to find it does go a little bit slower, you know, and on top of that, if you compare it to some of its closest competition, like the EM1 Mark II, the M1 Mark II's continuous autofocus is not as quick, but it inspires confidence because it works very much like a, a regular camera system would. The lens goes into focus and continuous, follows your subject and stays there. Now the Panasonic G9 does this very strange thing where it focuses and it starts to kind of wobble and shake. And it doesn't inspire confidence. However, when you hit the shutter button and look at your photos, invariably they're in focus. So. The G9 is one of these weird cameras where you got to trust it. You got to trust that it's going to focus properly. And if you do, it will not disappoint you. But if you're the kind of person that gets a little bit squeebly because it doesn't look like things are working properly, this camera is going to drive you crazy. So of course, having a fast frame rate, fast focusing, that's all important, but mm -hmm. you also have to just be able to track the moving subject that you're trying to shoot, right, Joe? Exactly, yeah. Viewfinder is a big part of that. I love mm -hmm. this, it's got 120 hertz refresh rate, mm -hmm. so it's very lifelike. I don't ever feel like I'm lagging or you know moving the camera has to catch up. It's very quick. But when it also comes to just the viewfinder itself, a lot of mirrorless cameras have problems with which we call blackout, where mm -hmm. you know I take a picture, I'm shooting continuously, and by the time the camera responds back to show me my view, the animal's moved yeah, it's or done. out yeah. of position, right? Pain. Exactly. So you've used this mechanical shutter. Yep. How do you find that that's tracking? Oh, it's actually it's pretty impressive. It's just like shooting a DSLR. I found that like, too. Yeah. Like, it really reminds you of just shooting an that's SLR. That's right. right. I'm panning, and and you know, it, you know the shutter's you know blasting away, but I'm still able to track the animal, right? There's Keep it in the frame. It's actually pretty cool, for sure. Now, electronic shutter, what's really beautiful about this, if you are shooting the, the, the electronic shutter, there's basically no blackout. Mm -hmm. So you're just pushing the button, frames are going, and you're just seeing the action happen. So I would say that's also very impressive, but I think we've got to keep in mind, viewers at home, this camera shoots so fast, you're buffering out about what? How many raw? 50. 50 raw, right? That's so, right. You could clear that out in two seconds, and then you are definitely gonna have to stop and wait. Joe's got the battery grip on his camera, and he's gonna be shooting all day long, no problems. Uh, it also counterbalances his bigger lenses really nicely. But I started with one tick down on this particular battery. I've been shooting now for about four hours. It is pretty cold, and uh, I still have two ticks left. So battery life in general in this, very, very excellent. On top of that too, we've got some nice features, dual SD card slot. They're both UHS-2 architecture, so very, very fast. It'll help with that raw buffering. All in all, these are smart ideas. And the best part, when you're driving out or traveling like this, the G9 can actually have the battery charge off USB port, as well as an external charger if you want. So you have the option to charge this off of an external battery source or plug it into your computer port or, you know, charge it with a phone charger if you're out traveling. It makes a lot of sense. So what Joe's playing with right now is the high-res mode uh, on the G9. Now, this isn't new technology. Uh, Olympus has been doing this for a while. You know, the A7R three year review does a similar thing. You can hear it bursting off there. But what it's basically doing is shifting the sensor while taking multiple photos. In this case, the G9 takes eight. But there's some nice features here. First off, we're gonna quadruple our megapixel count. You can get 80 megapixels. But on this camera, it builds an all-in camera. We like that. And uh, you will get probably better dynamic range out of your files when combining all these together. And also you have a very clever choice to be able to choose if you want a RAW or a JPEG of that connected photo, that, that built up photo. Uh, or you can also have it keep the first RAW file or JPEG file as well from the first picture. So. I don't know, let's say that you've got a really nice landscape set up, you start your high res and something happens, movement or wind or your tripod falls over whatever, while it's doing the high res, at least you still have that first photo kept nice and sharp and clean. You can just use that as a single photo. But uh, overall, yeah, really smart interface, easy to use, and uh, it just gets you over that megapixel gap that a lot of people have a problem with on Micro Four Thirds cameras.
Now, Panasonic cameras have had a 6K photo mode for a while, but the G9 adds another option. So I wanna kinda of just talk about the differences there, kind of explain what you're gonna get with either one. Now, 6K photo mode does something interesting. You're getting roughly just over 18 megapixel files. It's not quite 6K video resolution, but it's a nice marketing word to throw in there. But it is essentially like a video recording that's gonna give you stills. So basically, you just play it, you have it running, you watch your scene unfold, and then you can do many things. If I want to just hold the button down, I can capture a very fast burst at you know effectively 30 frames per second, or I can do pre-burst where I wait for the moment to happen, and then I hit the shutter, and I know that I've captured a moment in time before and after. But the thing to remember is that these are JPEGs. It's basically compressed video that you can then pull still files out of. But not everybody's gonna be okay with just getting a JPEG out of that. And you might wanna get full res raw files so now Panasonic G9 has this super high speed burst mode and yet you can still do it with pre-record and this is effectively using the electronic shutter you're firing about 20 frames per second but you can do it in raw and it can do a quick pre-burst you can even set how long that interval is so I've got my camera set up I've got my shutter touched halfway I'm watching a bird take flight and I just wait for it and right when I see it take flight, I can hit the button. I know that I've captured just a moment of time before that, and then I get my high speed burst. Now, the thing you have to remember is, unlike 6K photo mode, it cannot be sustained for a very long time. It's going right onto the camera's buffer and then to the card. So I'm getting maybe a second and a half to two seconds of shooting. So unlike 6K, I can't draw it out, but I also get full RAW files at full quality. Oh, I don't want to forget to mention this handy little button here at the bottom. It's this little toggle, and that is effectively what it is. You can set up a bunch of different functions. And again, for example, night mode, peaking, auto review, bracketing, self timer, quality settings, stabilizer. There's a whole bunch of very commonly used settings. You can set it there, and then it's an on and off toggle. So for example, if I set it to night mode, I can have my camera shooting regularly, and then if I want to put it on night mode, I just flick that toggle, and all of a sudden my screen is red or I could have my stabilizer on while I'm shooting handheld and then I'm gonna go put it on a tripod click that and my stabilizers off and these can be really handy features to have it's nice that we have an extra customizable switch there all right we've had a good day out Joe yeah, no kidding. I uh, appreciate you uh, spotting yeah. wildlife you got eagle yeah. eyes there thank you very much so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back to town we're gonna look at those files and yeah. I know you've got some trail cams that you want to go yeah I want to go right? see what I can uh, find see what kind of critters are uh, milling out and about there so. absolutely well thanks very much for being yeah, our guide hey, no today problem. I appreciate it and yeah I hope we can do this again and folks at home don't forget check out joedesjardins.ca uh, you can do that for Instagram Twitter and Facebook hey yeah, have you a look bet. at your stuff you're teaching a lot of workshops yeah. guiding a lot of other lucky people so right thanks on. so much appreciate for it us guys today. Yeah, thanks very much. Hey everyone, it's Jordan, the video guy. I want to talk about the G9, and a lot was made of what they took away from the GH5. Now, this camera shoots 4K, does a great job of it, shoots up to 60 frames per second, but you do make a few concessions compared to the GH5. You do lose the 10-bit recording as the major step back. As well, you no longer have waveforms, vector scopes, and you can't choose any variety of slow-mo that you want. Unfortunately, if you do shoot the 180 frame per second, which this does support at full 1080, you're restricted to 60 or 30 frame per second. If you shoot your show at 24 frames per second, like we are right now, a little bit restrictive, but not a huge drawback, honestly. I think the G9 is a less expensive camera than the GH5, also because you're losing the unlimited record mode from the GH5, so you don't have those tax issues. But let's look at what you're actually getting with this camera. You get the amazing stabilizer from the GH5. Chris is hand-holding the camera right now. You can see it does a nice job. You're still getting the Cine D and V profiles, so there is some flexibility for grading, even though you don't have access to the log profiles. But you've got to remember, we have a headphone jack on this. We've got a full swivel screen. We've got the best EVF I've ever used. So if you're not planning to do a lot of high-end video shooting, really take advantage of some of those log recording modes, the 10-bit color. The G9 is an insanely capable video camera that happens to be tied to the best photo camera Panasonic makes. I think it's a very compelling package if you're not using it primarily as a professional video tool. All right, it's time to wrap this puppy up. We've had a long day. We got to shoot a lot of shooting with Joe, and we did actually get to see some wildlife. We didn't get skunked on that, so that's good. Did some nice landscapes, and you know, 
The G9, I think really, we've got to keep in mind a few things. I mean, first of all, mirrorless has reached a point where it is effective in areas of photography that we would only have trusted DSLRs to do. I mean, this is just another great example. The G9 had no problem shooting quickly. It's got a brilliant viewfinder. The body's rugged and any battery life issues that mirrorless had, well, they're not present here on the G9. So that all has to be appreciated. I mean, speaking of competing with DSLRs, the Panasonic G9 even has a top deck LCD just like your Nikon and Canon. So you'll feel right at home if you're switching. And I think that's what it really comes down to. I mean, this is a camera that gives you an option to switch to be able to do action in sports and wildlife like we're doing today with a package that's much lighter and much smaller. And I know there's a lot of photographers out there that would really appreciate that. And you talk about things like nine frame continuous autofocusing with mechanical shutter. 20 if you go to electronic, 60 if you don't need focusing. I mean, that might seem really excessive, but it's better to have a camera that has that capability than to be stuck without it, right? So the Panasonic G9, let's compare it to things like, I don't know, the Sony a6500. That's a very capable, fast focusing camera, but this has a body design and a battery grip and a viewfinder that's much better used for fast action sports and wildlife. If you're using long lenses, Sony unfortunately don't have a good line of long lenses yet. I'm sure they will, but Panasonic have gone through great lengths to come out with excellent glass that has the focal lengths that you're looking for. Plus having micro four thirds with that double the size on the crop factor really makes it helpful. Low light performance is not going to win over APS-C in full frame. That's a given. But, you know, considering the cost of this being way lower than super cameras like the A7R Mark III, having lenses which are much smaller and lighter, these are big advantages for people who want to shoot during the day and shoot long lenses. I really think you should take a good look at the Panasonic G9. You know, the EM1 Mark II, as much as we love it, this camera is competing in the exact same field. It's got an easier menu system. It's faster shooting. And things like the 6K photo and the pre-burst are refined and working better than what the Olympus has. And now you've got multi-shot if you need the extra megapixels. I hope you folks enjoyed that. Don't forget to follow us. Check out Instagram. Tweet to us. Make comments below. Follow us on Facebook. Let us know any questions and comments that you might have. Uh, we were so appreciative that you guys joined us for this latest review. As usual, stay tuned and we will see you very soon.